I wonder if you have a favourite Old Testament story. I was thinking of one of mine recently in the book of Daniel about Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego and particularly the story in chapter three. It's got everything, drama, tension, goodies, baddies, even got a giant gold statue and and a fiery furnace. Well, I was thinking about these characters, Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego, or my shack, your shack and a bungalow, as we used to say. And they were Israelites. They had been taken, captured and taken into exile in Babylon, modern day Iraq. And they were handpicked for their uh, good looks and presumably their brains, their physique and their physique to be trained in the university and to become Chaldeans. And so they were taught the language. They were encouraged to eat their food. But along with Daniel, their friend and mentor, they were followers of Yahweh and they weren't prepared to compromise. So they, they, uh, refused to eat some of the food, the food that came from the king's kitchen and just ate vegetables. They became vegetarians and the Bible tells us that they were healthier for it. And so these men have already made a mark. They've stood out for God. So then Nebuchadnezzar, who was obviously a very vain king, he had built this statue and the order went around that everyone should bow down to it. And I guess we can think of this statue as kind of representing Nebuchadnezzar himself and certainly representing obedience to him. But Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego, they refused to bow down to this, this idol. So they were taken before the king, before the court. So there they are with all the uh, different officials, satraps and people around them and the king said right here is my furnace you'll be thrown in there if you refuse to bow down to my statue and I was sort of wondering what this fiery furnace would look like it must have been pretty big if three men could fit in it so they're faced with certain death uh, torture and what do they do well, they think about God. They remember who Yahweh is and they say, our God is able to save us. He's able to deliver us from you, O King. He's able to rescue us. Maybe they were thinking of Psalms that would have been their hymn book. Psalm 91, for example, that says that those who, who follow the Lord, they are protected by the Almighty under the shadow of his wing. Uh, so kept close to God. And then Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So, O king, you're just a little minion before God. You might think you're so powerful, but even your authority comes from God. Even this fire was created by God. Maybe that furnace was where the gold statue was blasted, was, was formed. And so now they face, they're standing beside it. And we're told that it was so hot that if you got too close, you could just die from that. And then they go on and they say, but even if you don't save us, uh, even if God doesn't save us, we will still worship him. Yahweh is the only God we're going to worship. So they show even more courage and trust in God. And they they say that. It's just not worth compromising because we know he's he's with us. And they had that deep personal relationship with him. And I just think it's wonderful. They're superheroes, aren't they? So we know that in the story they were thrown into the fiery furnace. But instead of burning, what did they find? As the king looked in, Presumably he had like a, a little window he could look through. He could see four men and the, the ropes had disappeared. They were walking around and the fourth man looked like a son of God, it says. And I, so we know. So that was Jesus in there with them, 
talking to them and encouraging them and probably encouraging them to go on facing the persecution and the difficulties that they were encountering. And so they came out and their hair wasn't even singed. They weren't burnt at all. Now, we've been experiencing difficult times. Some have lost their jobs. I'm very thankful that working in the NHS, my job is secure. But many are facing insecurity. We've been separated from friends and family. Uh, many have been bereaved. And I just, I was thinking that in these times, it's so important that we remember that God is with us, that in the fiery furnace, he is there with us. He will be encouraging us. And I just pray for each of you that you'll know his presence, his peace, his provision and his strength. And that we will remember this time as being when we were even closer to him.